one of the questions I'm asked a lot about is how I go about making belts. Um, belts are kind of a classic leather work type of item to make. The first thing I do when I get a belt order, and I'm going to make it by hand, of course, but the first thing I do when I get a belt order is I consider what size the belt needs to be. Um, so, for instance, that they were going to make a 40-inch belt. It's going to be for a bigger guy, and the way I figure out how to make a 40-inch belt is I automatically add 10 inches to the length of the belt size. By adding 10 inches to the belt size, it gives me enough room to cut the billet in the belt and the tip in the belt, and I cut my strap down, so I'm not overworking a strap. I'm not working a strap longer than it has to be. So, what we have here, we have our two pieces of leather. This is going to be what I consider what I call a heritage gun belt, or a heritage belt, depending on what day of the week you ask me. It consists of a piece of natural colored harness leather from, um, I believe this is from Herman Oak, and then also a piece of uh, Herman Oak skirting this has been split down so i think two this is a three ounce three ounce piece of herman oak saddle skirting and this one is this is about 12 ounces for natural harness right so to did so together that's gonna be about a 14 ounce belt perfect for a gun belt or a a again what we call a a heritage belt Okay, so for 40 inch belt, I'm gonna add 10 inches. I'm gonna cut my strap down to 49 inches, and that's gonna give us the total length of the strap that we're gonna work for today, all right? So because of the way I store my belts, I tend to have holes in the ends because I use these holes to hang them up on the wall. I'm gonna trim these holes off. Toss that scrap away, and then we'll measure our straps to be, let's see, it's 48 inches. 49 inches, 50 inches. We'll just measure them at 50 inches. And that will give us enough room. Now, to make the job easier, I have created these belt templates, right? There's two of them here, one for the tip end and then one for the billet end of the belt. This is based off of the measurements I've always used to make my belts. Uh, it makes it very easy for me. I do sell these on my website if you care to take a look at them, but this is all about making belt making a bit faster. So I'm not having to manually measure out belts, find the center points and things like that. So we'll use this and we will grab a pin or just a scratch all. And we're gonna leave our liner. We're not gonna worry about touching the liner at the moment. We'll do that in a minute. What we first need to do is figure out where the belt needs to bend over, right, to, to create that loop through the buckle. So I'm going to put this nearly at the tip end of the end of the belt strap, and I'm gonna mark the point in which, where the, um, this is the point where the, uh, the oblong punch is gonna be used to create the hole for the prong, right? And then when I take this over to my pull skiver, I'm going to use a pull skiver to skive down from that scratch point down to the end, and that's gonna be the fold over point. I'm gonna do that now. So now I've run the strap through, uh, at least the end of the strap through my pull splitter uh, to kind of thin out the end of the belt where it's gonna fold over to hold the buckle. And we've gone from about 12 ounces down to, let's see, we're now at about six ounces. So we basically shaved off half of that. That's a good weight, I think, for the fold over here. It's still gonna be nice and hefty. There's still gonna be plenty of leather there to support the buckle and uh, give a lot of durability, especially once we add the liner in. So we've got that done. Now we can flip it over, start working the top side of the leather. Let's mark kind of our holes and where we're going to um, put our rivets. We're also going to mark the oblong punch slot where we're gonna put that later more rivet holes, right? And then finally, we're gonna go ahead and trim off the, actually no, we're gonna wait before we trim off the end, we're gonna go ahead and glue, glue the pieces together. Now that I have the holes marked here, I can go ahead and measure out the full length of the belt. Now, I measure my belt by measuring from where the buckle's gonna fall, and we're gonna use this nice brass buckle here, just as a demonstration, where the buckle's gonna fall from that point to whatever the customer tells you his belt length is gonna be. So in this case, we're making a 40 inch belt. So 40 was gonna be here. That's gonna be the middle hole. Some people like to put five holes, some people like to put seven holes. I tend to go with longer belts with seven holes for the customer to adjust. If this was a shorter belt, say like a 32 or 34 inch belt, I would probably only go with five, right? Because for the smaller guys, they need less of a, a tip in there. For bigger guys, they can, the length of the belt can handle that extra length. So not too worried about that. 
using my template, I do know the middle hole, it's marked here on my template where the middle hole for the belt is gonna be. That's gonna go on 40, which is the length of the belt. And you can see I still have about two or three inches at the end of the belt for, uh, for this. So I added, I think, 10 inches. If we added nine inches to the, to the, uh, to the belt size, that would be fine for the strap length as well. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and mark these holes as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And uh, because we're already here, we can go ahead and trim this off. We're gonna take our belt end punch, this one here. I've had this one for a few years. It's fairly sharp. And because I get really anal and I like to make sure that the tip end is lined up perfectly, I actually take a square to make sure that I'm not leaning too far left or right or skewing left or right uh, when I trim this off. So let me grab my square very quickly. And then with my square, I know exactly where the, the end punch needs to be. I can remove my template and then use a small square to square it up, making sure that the gaps on both sides of the belt are even, which means the tip will be even as well. Take our maul, give it a couple strong whacks. And there's the tip end of our belt. We can do the same thing at the other end. Now you may also choose to do this after you've already glued it up. It really doesn't matter. It just depends on your workflow and how you're uh, going about things. I'm also gonna make sure that this end is square as well. And this square I use is in my workshop specifically, specifically for this purpose. All right, so there you go. The top strap, which is the natural harness leather is cut to size, the holes are marked. The next thing for us to do is we're gonna glue this up because we wanna have a liner here. Now for my gun belts and heritage belts, I don't add any fillers. I think fillers are, are a little bit superfluous. I think the leather would do all the work for you. And between the, the harness leather and the skirting liner, it's, it'll, be, it'll be rigid enough for most people. So we're not working more leather than we have to. I'm gonna trim this one down a little bit. It's about a few inches too long. And we're going to take our glue. And in this workshop, we use a water-based contact adhesive. In this case, Aqualum 315 is my favorite. Small spatula. If you're doing a bunch of these, you can use a spray applicator. You could also use a roller, paint roller to do this. Because we're only making one belt right now, using your small paint application, excuse me, glue applicator like this is perfectly fine. Now, when I'm applying glue, I wanna get all the way to the edge of the belt strap but I don't want to go over the edge of the belt strap. If you go over the edge of the belt strap, you have, you're gonna to have to do more sanding to get to remove that, uh, that excess glue later because we don't want that on the sides of the belt. If it does get on the side of the belt, it's going to affect our finish, it's gonna affect the, our burnish, and um, that's not a good thing. On this belt, the edges will be probably left natural, so we're not gonna do any dyeing on this one, but if I was doing a black belt or a brown belt and I wanted to dye the edges, uh, I definitely want to get any excess glue off before I do that process. So the cleaner you work now, the easier it will be later. And we'll just work down the belt here, adding a little bit at a time. We're not in any rush. I found that rushing actually makes the process, whole process take longer, so it's easier just to take your time. All right, so there's the top strap, and we're going to do the same thing with the bottom. Now notice the top strap is for our, our heritage belt. It's an inch and a half wide. Our bottom strap is two inches. Now you can probably get these cut into strips of inch and three quarters, something like that, but I like the bottom uh, liner piece to be a bit wider. That way I can trim it back. So I'll glue this up, we'll put the top piece on top, kind of use our, our glass slicker to make sure that it's adhered very, very well, and then we'll use our blade to trim off the excess. <clears throat> on the filler, on the, on the liner piece, you can be a little faster with this one since you're not as worried about the edges getting glue on them. So there you go, both straps ready to go. It's that time to dry. We can now go through and put the pieces together. I'm gonna to start at the, at the billet end and we're going to make sure it's in the middle of our liner. Fibers are all nice and lined up the right way. Just work our way down slowly. Trying to stay in the middle if possible. And I'm just putting it on lightly now. We're gonna go back in a moment and we're gonna use a glass slicker 
sure to make sure the, the fibers are staying together. In addition to using a glass liquor, what I can also do is take my Bob's hammer here and tap this down. The reason why you see leather workers tap and hammer their glued pieces is because uh, it really helps the glue stick together. It's actually part of the way, the way the glues are made, manufactured. Tapping makes the molecules in the glue really stick. So just light. You're not trying to, you're not trying to beat the, the crap out of it. You're just trying to make sure you have good adhesion. And then what I'll also do is take my glass slicker and just slick that out. Make sure there's no air bubbles. There's no voids in there. All adhere together perfectly. All right. So that should be ready for us to move on to the next step. So now that the glue is set up, the glue is dried a little bit, and the edges are adhered very, very well, we need to go down the edges and trim off the excess liner, right? Now, we can do that a few different ways. One of the ways is by using your traditional head knife here. This has worked perfectly well. If this is, um, if you've got your glue dried and you've given it time to really dry up and set up, uh, using a head knife, head, knife, head knife like this, if it's sharp, is very easy. It doesn't stick. But if your glue hasn't set up completely, one of the other ways you can do this is just by using a rotary blade. This is a rotary blade, very easy to use. We're just gonna run this down the edge of the leather. And I'm gonna angle it in just a little bit to make sure that it is trimming as close as possible. And the goal here obviously is to trim off the liner, but do not cut the top piece. That's it. And so now those edges are, for the most part, perfectly flush with each other. There's a little bit of glue on the edge, a few little spots, I can rub my finger down the end, I can feel it you know, where it's gummy just a little bit. Uh, once it dries up, we can take it to the sander and sand that off very quickly. Let's do the other side. Boom, we're good to go. Now we have a 40 inch belt blank with liner. Total weight in the middle is about 14 ounces. And this one is um, ready for a quick sand to remove any excess glue and then stitching. Okay, so we've got our belt strap. It's all stitched up now. Edges look really, really nice. They're flush. Um, stitching goes all the way around. Now for this belt, even though it's a heavy duty belt, what I've opted for is a lighter thread. So this is a 138 thread instead of the normal 207 or 277 thread. You may not know all the thread sizes, that's fine. Just know that 138 is gonna be a thinner thread than 277. Um, typically on heavier belts, we go a heavier thread and then on lighter, more like dress belts, we go with a lighter thread. Uh, but this one I've opted to be somewhere in between. This is a 138. The next thing we need to do is worry about these edges. Because we were very careful with our glue up, we don't have a lot of excess on the edges, which is great. We just had a little bit of sanding, which can be done by hand, or if you have a power sander, that's fine too. Uh, just to knock off any little bits of glue that were there. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our, uh, our edge beveler. I like to use a number two, this is a number two Ron's tool, Tools Edge, edge Beveler. Uh, I've had this one for a while, it's very sharp. It works very, very well. And my goal when I'm beveling edges is to try to do it in one pass, right? I don't wanna be choppy with it. I want the beveler to be sharp enough to get through the entire side of the belt in one single pass. Let's see, can I do it? Just about. Let's try it on this end. There we go, looking good. I have to sharpen this and strope it pretty frequently to keep it in good condition. But it's been a great beveler for me. What this is doing is just knock it off, knocking off that sharp edge, the sharp 90 degree edge. So when you hold the belt, handle the belt, 
It feels really good in your hand and it looks good. All right, so that's done. You could probably stop here, right? But um, I think what would really make this look even sharper is if we slicked and burnished the edges a little bit. Um, but before I do that, we're also missing one piece and that piece is the belt loop. So I'm gonna take a piece of the exact same leather. We used the top piece here and this has been split down and thinned down from 12 ounces to this is now right at six and a half ounces, which will make a perfect keeper. For this size belt, I think we're gonna go with a half inch wide keeper. That should be, a, should be um, heavy duty enough to make it to be in proportion with the belt, but also not too big where it's a hindrance to the user. We will just take a sharp edge here. And again with the rotary knife, I already know the edge is straight. We're gonna measure half inch there with our acrylic ruler. I like these acrylic rulers because you can see through them. And then we're just gonna trim that down. And we don't have to go through one pass. Sometimes you do that, it'll make the ruler shift. We'll just go through lightly, score the top, and then go all the way through. Great. So this is a thinner piece of leather, so we're gonna bevel, we're gonna bevel the edges with a lighter bevel tool here. By the way, this piece is about five and a quarter inches long. We probably don't need that much to get all the way around these, uh, the belt, um, but I will tend to overcut them just a little bit and then cut them back to perfectly match the thickness of the belt uh, in the sizing process. We cut this a little long, that way we have the opportunity to trim it back. What we need to do now is measure it, specifically for the belt weight. So first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna make sure we have a straight end. And again, I'm gonna go back to my little, my little right angle square here. Not ne necessary, but I really do like to use it. We're gonna wrap our belt around and we're gonna make sure that the keeper goes fully around the belt. So it should be a little snug, but also still loose enough where the user can get the tip of the belt in and out. Now, if you're making a bunch of these belts, you can probably go ahead and make some assumptions that they're all gonna be the, in, they're all gonna be the same uh, length. But in this one, since we're making this belt one at a time, we're doing like this is a one-off belt. I just wanna double check that the loop is the right size. Use your rotary cutter or your um, head knife, whichever you prefer, trim that down, and there's your keeper. Now, before I stitch this one, just to make my life a little easier, I'm gonna go ahead and bevel, excuse me, I'm gonna go ahead and burnish the edges of this. And I like to use this solution for um, burnishing. It's been real popular the last year or so. It works very, very well. It's a water-based burnishing compound. And I'll just put a little bit on a foam brush. I keep these foam brushes. I buy them like 100 at a time. And I'm, I'm just pulling through them. I go through several of them a day. You can rinse them out and reuse them if you like. Uh, we do that around here pretty often. But once you apply any color to this or you use a different color of this burnishing compound, you should really only use it for that one color. So now it's ready for stitching so it matches the belt. So we have our keeper stitch now. And I'm going to take my slicker and just make sure those stitches are laying down nice and flat. In fact, it's a good idea to do that on the belt itself also. Just closes those stitch holes a little bit, makes it look a little nicer. Okay, so keeper's ready to go, belt's ready to go. Next thing we need to do is we need to burnish the belt itself. So I have this piece of uh, oak here. This is a two by two piece of oak that I have a, a groove cut into the middle. And all this does is it kind of serves as like third hand, holds the belt for me while I'm burnishing. It's very easy to make, something you may consider to make for, making for your workshop. You can actually make them with multiple rows of them if you like. And we're going to take our foam brush and burnishing agent. We're gonna do this belt in sections. You'll see just how fast this goes. I'm gonna dab this on. Just like that. We're not caking it on there. We're just putting a little bit on there. You just need enough to help lay the fibers of the, the belt down. You can rub that with your fingers and it's already starting to burnish now. But then I'll go in with my canvas, rub it just like that. And already that's taking on a nice glossy, glassy, smooth finish. And we're getting close to wrapping this up. All 
right, so belt's done. It's been burnished on both edges, bur both sides. Nice, clear burnishing. It's smooth, it's very glossy. If you like, you can hit this with a little bit of wax as well. On this belt, I'm, gonna, I'm going to skip the waxing piece. I like the way it's laying down. The edges were clean enough where wax is not exactly required or needed. But you can use wax on it if, if that's your preference. Next step is let's punch our holes. So we're going to start at the billet end. Then we have holes for our rivets. We need to punch first. This is an eighth inch hole punch. I find this works great for types of rivets I use here. Be careful to get your holes lined up nicely. Once the belt's put together, you want everything to line up properly. So don't feel like you have to be in a rush on this step. Now this is an oblong punch. We're going to punch the slot for the belt prong. There we go. Nice. And before we move on, let's go ahead and flip it over. Since we're already in the hole punching, in, already in hole punching mode, we can go ahead and punch out our um, our seven uh, sizing holes there. Now I'm using this is a five, five sixteenths inch oblong or oval punch on this one. When available, oval punches uh, I think do work better on these on these heavier duty belts. There's a lot of leather for the buckle to manage here, and these oval punches seem to give the belt. Um, make it a little easier for the belt to come on and off. And ultimately, this is all about the customer. So anything to make the customer happy and make their experience with the product better, I say uh, do that. Okay, so all the holes for the belt are done now. Both ends is looking pretty good. Next step is to put on the buckle and the keeper. Okay, so for the keeper, there's two ways to do the keepers. We've already got it measured to length. We've got it stitched. We've got it burnished. It's ready to go. You can now go and stitch this by hand. But what I have found in this workshop, the best thing for us is we actually use metal staples. We find that the metal staples do not wear away. We find that they don't get cut and snipped as easily. And um, they pre present a really great experience, the belt and uh, quality for the belt. Uh, and they're just as strong, if not stronger. So we have our stapler here. And I use two staples per keeper. Those staples will not wear away over time. And they will not pull out. There you go. So that keeper is ready to, ready to rock. All right, keeper. And then here's our belt buckle. I tend to use solid brass belt buckles in everything we do. And to set these, we're going to set them my favorite way, which is using a rivet and burr. And then we're going to hand pin the burr, excuse me, the rivet over uh, to make it permanent. So keeper goes on. What's important, don't forget your keeper. Put your buckle on. Make sure that the prong on the buckle is facing the right way. If not, uh, it actually will make it hard for the customer to get the belt on and off and you have to start the process all over. And then we're going to grab our rivets here. This is a number 12 brass rivet. Because we're using a brass buckle, I like to use brass rivets. Copper rivets will work as well, but again, my preference is to use brass when I'm using brass buckles. Okay, grab a burr. So you have the, the rivet, then you have the burr. We're gonna set the burr. Now that's permanent. And to lock that burr in, we're gonna take our nippers here. We're gonna trim the rivet shaft down. Start the peening process there, then come back with my round over setter. That is locked in, not going anywhere ever. Again, don't forget your keeper. We're gonna do the same process now that the keeper is up in the right position. Grab another burr. Set it. Trim it. Flatten that rivet out a little bit, then round it off. There you go. This belt is done. Perfect. 
There's your belt, 40 inch uh, natural harness belt with a saddle skirting liner. This will last the customer many, many years. That's how we do belts here at Old Lenthe Goods. <laughs>